Hey there, Spark fans, Rob Reynolds here. Here at SparkFun, we offer a number of options when it comes to prototyping and development boards. And I get to play with all of them, which is so great. Now, for a lot of what I do, I find myself gravitating back towards the ESP32. It's fast, it's powerful, and it offers multiple wireless connectivity options. Now, the Redboard IoT is great for rapid prototyping things, as it's got the ESP32 room module, pins are broken out to headers, it's got the quick connector, the USB-C connector, you can be testing your project in mere minutes. Now, once it works, sometimes I'll need a smaller board to fit into an enclosure or whatever, and for that, I'll jump over to the Thing Plus with the ESP32 room on it. Uh, same power, a little smaller footprint. Of course, there are some projects that swirl around in the cacophony of my mind that would require an even smaller footprint. And we got to thinking, well, since we already offer a number of boards on the one inch by one inch footprint, why not make a development board in that? And here it is, introducing the new SparkFun Quick Pocket Development Board. This little board is built around the ESP32C6 Mini 1 module. Now it is, according to Espressif, a single core processor, but if you dig into it a little bit, you'll find that it's actually got both high power and low power CPUs. Now, this is a 32-bit RISC-V processor with four megabytes of flash memory, hosting 23 multifunction GPIOs, although we haven't broken them all out due to the board's diminutive size. For example, you can use up to seven 12-bit ADC channels, up to two UART channels with flow control, a USB serial, one low power UART channel, one I2C channel, one low power I2C channel, an LED PWM, and one I2S channel. Wireless communication options include 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5 LE, Zigbee and Thread 802.15.4, all using the board's PCB antenna. And for those of you thinking about building this into your IoT network, yes, it is Matter compatible. The ESP32C6 even has a USB to JTAG bridge for debugging without any external circuitry. As far as the board itself, it's been trimmed down to the size of many of our quick sensor boards, a mere one inch by one inch, or 2.54 by 2.54 millimeters. It offers eight PTH pins, a USB-C connector, a two pin JST connector if you should decide to add a LiPo battery, a four pin quick connector, an MCP73831 battery charging circuit, LEDs for power, charge, and status, a pair of buttons for boot and reset, and four mounting holes. A big part of why we developed this board, in fact, what made it possible for us to develop this board, is the fact that this module, the ESP32C6, is so much smaller than the ESP32 room. Well, here, I'll show you. Look at that, how cool is that? And this opens up a whole host of possibilities for working with the ESP32. And since you know I love showing off the work of other Funyuns, I'm gonna send you over to our old pal Drew and show you what he's cooked up with this board. Take it away, Drew. Oh, hi there. Uh, I have here this demo that I put together with the new ESP32C6 pocket board. Um, one of the really fun things about the form factor is that it matches the one by one footprint of our other quick boards. And I had the idea of stacking them together and turning it into this smartwatch. And there's a few boards I've included in here. At the bottom, there's the C6. You can't really see it in there. It's kind of hidden away. But on top of that, we have the BMA400, which I'm using for some input stuff. And then there is a real-time clock module, as well as our quick OLED on top. And so I'm using the display to you know, display the time right now based on the time stored in the RTC. And I'm also using the, uh, the BMA400 for input detection. So I can actually tap on it to cycle through different menus that I have available. One of these things that I have in here is step counting. So if I start you know, running around and get my exercise in for the day, then that step counter starts increasing. It says I was just running. As you can see, I'm clearly running very fast here. Um, in addition to that, I can also monitor the battery voltage. That's something we'll talk about in a second here, but there's super low power consumption on this. And also I can synchronize the uh, RTC using the Wi-Fi capabilities of the ESP32C6. So right now, if we take a look at this, you can see it's currently saying it's about 220 or so. That's not really correct. It's actually 1254. And so if we go into that menu and I can do a double tap to synchronize that clock. So the ESP32C6 is going to connect to the Wi-Fi network here, connect to an NTP server and get what the current time is and synchronize it. So now you can see the correct time is actually 1254, like we expect. 
So one of the things to highlight here, the ESP32 is not actually looking at any of the data coming from the accelerometer. It is just looking at the interrupt that fires from the accelerometer to do these navigation things, as well as the step counting, and also automatically turning off the screen and back on as I turn it towards and away from me. Um, and then also Rob 3D printed this uh, nice flexible wrist strap for me for the, for the smartwatch. So thank you, Rob, much appreciated. So here I've removed the battery from the watch so we can actually connect to an external power supply so I can measure the current consumption from the board, from the entire stack actually. And in wake mode, it, you can see the current consumption is around 40 milliamps. I could probably optimize that a bit, but after 60 seconds, it will automatically enter a deep sleep, which you can see it just did there. And the current has dropped so low that it's not even measuring in this range anymore. So I'm gonna drop the range down. And you can see the entire stack of boards here is drawing just over 22 micro ramps for the entire stack of boards. That includes the processor board as well. In fact, most of that current consumption is coming from the processor. The BMA400 accelerometer is actually still active right now, and it's waiting for a double tap. And when it sees that, it will fire an interrupt to the C6 processor to wake it up. And so if I give that a double tap, you can see it wakes back up just like we saw. The battery I'm using for the smartwatch has a capacity of about 400 milliamp hours, and with the 22-ish microamps of current consumption, it could theoretically last for two years in deep sleep. More cool stuff from the brain of Drew via his wrist. Thanks, Drew. So there you have it. Phenomenal cosmic power, itty bitty board. The new SparkFun Quick Pocket Development Board featuring the ESP32C6 Mini. Pick up yours over on our website, and until next time, stay safe, be kind, and happy hacking. Introducing the new SparkFun Quick po Pocket Development. It doesn't say ESP32 in it anywhere. Also, my ear popped halfway through and I was like, why does everything sound weird? What's going on here? I should really look up the name of the thing before I talk yeah, about you it. Really should. <clears throat> did I say the right words in there? I don't think I did.